I'm appreciating the little things much, much, much more than, than before in my life. We only have one life, I mean, just live it. How many times has an opportunity be right in front of you and you missed it? Maybe you're focused on the wrong thing? Maybe you are afraid? Some people think that life's journey is just all planned out. I don't think that it is. I think you have to put yourself out there, no matter what, if you really want to get somewhere in life. My name is Klaus and I'm a photographer. I believe I have lived an extraordinary life. I've seen the world and I've experienced amazing things. And one of the biggest challenges I ever had to face pushed me out of my comfort zone more than I could ever know. The reason why I'm here in Kenya is maybe not the reason why you, I think, I'm here. I had to change something in my life. In 2017, I was diagnosed with cancer. I had to go through radical life-altering changes and learn to live with the idea that the end of life does not mean the end of living. I like to share my story with you. I always had this dream of living somewhere close to the beach and uh, next to the, uh, close to the sun. In round about 2000 I had a commercial photo job here in Cape Town and very soon I fell in love with the mother city because it's really one of the most beautiful cities in the world. My photography career gave me the freedom to have that kind of lifestyle which I'm living in now. I mean, I have this wonderful house here with this amazing view over the whole of Hout Bay. And I mean, I can't get enough of this. It's just breathtaking. Almost every morning we go to one of the most beautiful beaches here in Cape Town to Landatno and have a walk with Nala, our dog. And just that gives me all the energy for the, for the upcoming day. As a photographer, I'm very aware of what is around me. My photos are not just portraits of animals. I like to see them as capturing a story, and a story of the animal. Where they were, what is the landscape, and what's the weather like. These all plays a very important part in that story. Obviously Klaus has changed his career from, from being a fashion and, and stock photographer, lifestyle photographer, to becoming one of the top wildlife photographers, which you know, takes is a complete different approach and his pictures stand out because they are very unique. You know, they almost look, when I first saw them, I thought, like, okay, that's, that's a great Photoshop, but surely you didn't see all these animals in, in one shot. And he said, no, they were there. I was there. For me, Klaus' photographs are very unique. When I look at this photograph, for example, I feel like I'm right in there. None of these animals is disturbed. It's like you're in it. The way Klaus tries to reinvent himself is, uh, I've always found, um, quite inspiring. And I think that's what he do has been doing in the last um, sort of 
eight to ten years as a wildlife photographer and a fine art photographer, I've seen that same degree of passion for innovation and pushing, pushing new limits for himself as well as in the category. It's time again now to push myself into something new. I want to go to Kenya for more than new photos, but to share my journey with the world. We prepared now for the last, uh, what, three, four, five weeks now. We wrote, we're writing scripts, we are arranging locations and we are in email contact uh, with all the lodges where we're going. And finally, in 10 days, we are heading off. Dates are set. First, it's uh, Dean, my director and cameraman, and me. And then two weeks later, Sandra and the kids, uh, they are joining us. Uh, in Kenya in the Masai Mara. I'm taking my family this time and they are desperately want to go to Kenya and want to see where I'm taking most of my pictures. Welcome to Cape Town International Airport. Check of toy craft navigational systems. The idea of going to Kenya came while I was in recovery. When I was first diagnosed, there were so many, so many emotions. I, I was angry, I was sad. And I, I remember just sitting in the corner and crying and saying, my God, why me? So, jetzt haben wir in Johannesburg gelandet. And I realized I can't give up. I mean, there's still so much to do and then I have family and I, I want to live. Life is just so beautiful. We're leaving South Africa, heading to Nairobi now. And in, in, that, in these moments, I needed a goal. I, I, I needed to focus, to get out of the bed of the hospital and to, to be motivated to walk again and to, to, to live. I remember when, when we arrived in Nairobi, oh, <laughs> Then I also thought, oh my God, was, is this the right decision to, to, to make this whole project here? And it was raining and, uh, and I was, yeah, I mean, there was still a big mountain to move in front of us. My first stop in Kenya is Ambozeli National Park. The flight to Ambozeli will be only the next morning. So we needed to stay in Nairobi for one night. And it rained all night. The taxi driver said the rain has just only begun. And they were very happy because it is probably the end of the drought they just had. Sunday morning in Nairobi. Heading off to Wilson Airport and then to rainy Amboseli. Unfortunately, you can't smell it. I mean, it smells like... like Kenya. Amboseli National Park is very famous for his big elephants and big elephant herds. And of course, for the Kilimanjaro.
see this mountain there in the background, I mean, this is really, really impressive. But it was not why we were there. We were there because of the elephants. Two days before we arrived it has rained and it was still raining and while we were there so suddenly this this dusty area which I know this turned into green grass and, and, and big big almost yeah, lakes it was just amazing to see the contrast between this very dry which is normally cut sometimes for years and now it's so green and so fertilized i mean that was just uh, something really special one of the goals of this trip was to find tim the famous elephant tim i've been a couple of times to Ambuseli, but uh, for some reason, there was never the chance to, to see him and to take some pictures of him. Junior, my guide and me, we explored Amboseli, but this time it was quite difficult and different. The weather is very great for me if it's moody like this, but it's very hard to find the animals and then to find a good setup to make a good picture. So we just kept driving and looking around all day. I didn't expect to get a hippo with a baby in, the, in this beautiful last light here. Because normally, most of the time, I mean, I see the hippos in the water. You see just the back and, uh, and the nose and, and the ears. When you're lucky, they are yawning or they are fighting a little bit. Last time I was here in, in Amboseli, it was dusty and totally dry. And now it has changed completely. It, uh, it's a totally new picture of the Amboseli Park for me. Ah, that was a good one. Yeah. But Amboseli is special. I mean, it, I really like it here. Banana. Because I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, I had to go through a very long and difficult operation. And as a result, I must eat quite regularly and take also my tablets. I mean, at home it is fine, but while I'm on safari, it's always challenging to have the right food at the right time. This is Pascal and here I have the opportunity to have a very low angle which is very important for my pictures because then the animal even looks much bigger and stronger. Just, just, just lying there was uh, so close to Pascal on the floor and seeing him into the eyes, I mean this was really something very special. You don't have these opportunities every day. Come, come along. 
But unfortunately, I didn't get a, a good picture out of this scene. I mean, there were good opportunities, but the background with this tree and the forest was just too busy and, and a couple of other things were not 100% like, it, like I wanted to have it. Junior was notified that Tim the Elephant was rumored to be far on the eastern side of uh, the national park. We decided to slowly head in this direction in, in case of some more accurate news. gar nicht so lange her, weil das ist zehn Monate her, war ich im Krankenhaus, hat die Operation gehabt. Da kann ich mich noch gut daran erinnern, wie ich mich damals gefühlt habe. Und jetzt bin ich halt wieder hier und das ist, finde ich halt sehr schön. Weil damals habe ich wirklich fast gedacht, es ist vorbei. Ne? So that because we are nearby Otukai, and then let me speak to them and then I come back to you. From Tobin, phoning me, they say that they can allow, they allowed you to go there. And what is there? No, for Tim. He's still looking for that elephant. The elephant is still there. Yeah, come, let's try it. The problem was, it was already after lunchtime, but we thought, no, I mean, we just take the chance, we have to go there. So we had to leave Amboseli Park, the national park, and to drive outside somewhere for, I think, one or two hours.
man sieht, wir fahren hier total Offroad. Und ja, mein Pulsschlag ist um einiges höher als äh, noch heute Morgen, weil es wird absolut spannend. Tim ist der in der Bar. We, we saw him from the distance, but uh, he, and he was surrounded by a couple of other big elephants and it was um, very challenging to come close to him. Because there's always some fights with the farmers around, so they are very, very shy. So we have to relax and to just to, to come closer to the herd. They must get used to us and they come a little bit closer and this whole process took already I think one and a half, two hours to get even a little bit close to take some kind of pictures. I was very happy to find uh, Tim and his, his friends and to take some pictures but it was not the picture. This was so amazing. I mean, we were so close to these to these ele elephants, and uh, I mean, I could also go out of the car. And I mean, this is the position I, I really, really love. And um, I mean, it was so amazing. I mean, I've been so close to these animals after all these driving back and forth and getting used, or they getting used to us. I mean, and, and when I was lying on the ground and, and looking to Tim, I mean, it is just, a, just an amazing, beautiful elephant with his big tusk and his big feet and his, his ears and his oil flapping, I mean, it's, I mean, it's such a beautiful animal. So they are also going back into the forest, it looks like. Can we come again? Another day? Another day? Yeah. Can we do one more day? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because we you will. know photographers, no? I say photographers are always crazy with them. They the always want the best and they have yeah. the best and they yeah. think they can go better. Yeah, better, <laughs> sure. yeah. And this, just like that. Yeah. It's, it's nature, so. Yeah, but yeah. Not every day you see the same pictures. Each mm. and every time different pictures. Yeah, no, you must also challenge. the alcohol and the climate and the weather. Yeah, you must also challenge yourself. There is always, there is a chance to always get a little bit better. Yeah. The next day I traveled all the way back to find Tim again. We managed to get stuck in the mud. But eventually we did find the herd again. And something happened which I, 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 I only realized 100% later when I saw the footage and when I was talking to the, to the rangers which were with us, that one elephant came close to us and was lying down and was sleeping. A youngster was sleeping. They are just maybe 12 meters away from me. I was very honored that, that they were I, I, I mean, I was there with them. It was just a, such a big privilege to be so intimate with these elephants.
This is not work for me. This is just uh, this is just life. This is just beautiful. When you get home, first you wash your hands, then unpack your camera and uh, downloading all the files. Downloading all the files, make a backup and make another backup. And then, yeah, have a shower. That's done. We're going to Masai Mara tomorrow. Flying into the Masai Mara and gee, just seeing this open green plains of grass. I mean, it was so good to see John after all this long, long time. And it was just amazing to see his smile and his love in his face. And uh, I'm so glad to be back and uh, spending the next couple of weeks with him. On this trip, things were different. I, I guess I think I never felt more alive. The Masai Mara is always a great place, but this time it was like you know, overdrive. I am here to tell my story, and it was like everything around me was new. You know, the people you meet in your life, they shape the person you become. We have all been told that an important part of to being successful is surrounding yourself with the right people. But, but the crazy thing is, I mean, you don't know who are the right people, I mean, until you go with them. When I met John the first time in the Masai Mara, I mean, he was young and inexperienced. He hardly spoke English, almost like me, so that was a good match. I went to driving school and I got uh, my license and I was asking for uh, driving to be a driver guide. It was my dream before, but I thought because of my education is very uh, small, I, I don't get this. But, you know, God said yes. And uh, I found some good friends and they sponsored me to English school. When I, when I finished, I came to back to my uh, starting area where I start my life and uh, they give me a job as a driver guide and I found my friend uh, Musungu Masai called Klaus Tige. We developed a, a way to work together. Since then I'm, I'm very proud to see him to become a real man now. He, he got his own safari car, he got his own brick house and his wonderful family. I mean, I had the chance when I met him first, I could ask for a more experienced driver. But I saw something in him like a, like a younger version of me. This is our first game drive in the morning. And we are heading towards three Lion Brothers, which must be somewhere around here. Now we are surrounded here by 14 lions and they're just lying there and relaxing, digesting because they had a kill There's somewhere lying around a hippo 
Light could be better, the position of the line could be better, but oh yes, there's always something, but in the end of the day, just make the best of what you get. It's very important. I mean, complaining about this and that is the easiest part. Just challenge yourself. But something other, something else is happening on that side. Well, there's uh, one female walking. Going to another side. Ah, so now it's a decision. decision. Do we stay here? Do we go there? Do we go there? That's always the thing. Where do we go? Do we stay and wait? What? Oh, the Frenchman says. Ah, yeah. By the way, bonjour, ça va? Où est mon croissant? Ich habe noch kein Breakfast gehabt. We just try to find our perfect position. This is not a perfect position because she's walking just over the road, which I don't like. This elevation is still too high. hiding in the bush again and shame I mean sun is just coming out here perfect light but you can't have it on there are moments here it can look very magical the sun comes out a little bit and you have still clouds and the clouds are making some shade on the grass so there's light and dark and light and dark it's just just magic Some lines here, they looks like they want to cross the river. Can't see them at the moment, but they must be here somewhere. John, what would I do without you? Oh. It's perfect. You found the perfect spot here. Just this one car. I mean, if this could move only a meter. Or I try to talk. It's not longo. Yeah. It's longo. No, some people are just They're just relaxing. It's just relaxing. They they have no. They don't think. The challenge at the moment is one car, which is just behind the line. And my perfect picture. I mean, it's an amazing picture. I mean, you are in my picture. Getting closer to the lines on the other side of the river was not as easy as we thought. We just have the river just behind us. We passed it very easily but now it's the problem is to get out of this riverbed it's, it's very muddy and slippery but John always has a plan I mean he's just cutting some branches from the bushes here and we're getting there okay let's try again Eventually we got assistance. Some guys from a nearby camp came to help us.
muss er dann auch Zeit mitbringen. Ne? We must just wait. I think they will sleep for still a while because it's quite cool. As, as, as soon as the sun, sun comes out, they will move. Breakfast while we're waiting for the right shot. Camera prepared. So you want coffee? Yeah. Cheers, my brother. Cheers. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm still alive. Please <laughs> welcome back. Something is happening. Look at this. These are the moments where I really, really enjoy photography. I mean, you're so close to the, to the animals and this environment. It's, I mean, it's a beautiful setting here, but I don't have 100% control over this. I mean, it's totally different now in nature photography than before. I mean, I don't have a stylist here. I don't have a makeup artist here. I can't put a screen here or put another light there. I just must trust that Mother Nature is giving me the best and hope that it will happen. For the style in my photos for the Pride of Africa collection, it's very important that I have a low angle, that I have this moody, dark, cloudy sky and the animal must be in a very proud position, proud and perfect position, that's, that's what I'm aiming for. Today we spent almost the whole day here with the lions and we have some nice footage definitely, especially in that five minutes when the sun came out and gave a little bit of light. Okay, super, thank you very much, John. The rain is coming, we have to leave. Quick, quick, otherwise we're getting soaking wet. back and it was just I mean John already started the engine we wanted to go and then this couple was standing up and then they started mating and I mean, you won't believe it I mean but I can show you the footage I mean the Sun came out a bit and it was wonderful footage I mean beautiful day today now we're heading off I mean you see the Sun probably on that side but on this side it's completely dark
When I'm in the Mara, I'm, I'm focusing on, on the cats. So most of the time I spend with the lions. But sometimes we also have to go for the leopards because this is just a beautiful animal. I learned to read John's driving skills and how he drives. He tells me already what's happening or what's happening soon. I have this on. leopard, the window of opportunities you get so small. It was a time frame of four or five minutes where we just action, action, action. But now the leopard is hiding again and now we just try to spot him again. Looking for something to hunt and it looked like they left the babies behind. The leopard retreated back into the bush and this is a good time to have some breakfast some food in my system. Sometimes it's quite difficult to relax. I know, I said, uh, you have to enjoy every single moment and just take it like it comes. You're here now, you want to have a picture. But you have to take your time, I know, I know. John was sure she had some cups in the area, but we have to find her and wait. Leopards are one of my favorite animals. I mean, they are so um, elegant and they're so beautiful and they're so clever. I, um, I, I really love watching leopards. We waited a long time after lunchtime and slowly I, I, I got a little bit weak and had some funny feelings in my stomach. So it was best to leave and go back to the camp and, and get some proper food. We left that spot and uh, less than five minutes later, a friend of John uh, called us and said, no, oh, she's coming down, she's coming down. She's probably going to her cups now. Oh, so we turned around came back to the leopard and uh, there there was that uh, special setting. She was just playing around with her cups and it was just uh, was it just adorable and there was no thinking about an empty empty stomach it was just just watching this whole scene and it was still raining here and there a little bit uh, and it was getting darker and darker but it was just 100% worthwhile to come back. This leopard picture with the two cups, I mean, this is really special. I was so excited when I was sh capturing it, but I was also so nervous that I don't have it. Back now to the lodge and uh, just check the files if they are 100% in focus, because I'm not 100% sure because of the darkness now. Like I said, it's 20 past six it's, and it was raining. It was raining all the time. In the night when we came back to our camp, it was just like, I mean, normally I don't do this, but this time, I mean, I thought, no, I, I, I want to know because I, I knew if, if it's right, I mean, then it's really right. And so I looked to in Lightroom to all these pictures and it was like, then I clicked and clicked, blurry, blurry, and then the perfect position of all three of them 
and they were 100% in focus. I mean, I had a long exposure time, I had a very uh, open uh, stop, and it was just perfect, and I was so happy that, yeah, I mean, this is how it works. Eventually I ate something, but I know this time I pushed myself too hard. And very quickly it turned and I got white in the face and I throw up and... Uh, but even this Dean filmed. <laughs> but I mean that's part of, that's part of the... Yeah. My stomach was... And then I throw up and now... Yeah, shortly after this we even had more bad news. I mean, family arrived on the airstrip on Masai Mara, but we got the news, oh, it rained somewhere and uh, the river is too high, we can't cross the river. We met the uh, family at the river, and uh, but which we couldn't cross, so we could wave to each other. We're talking on the cell phone to each other because I mean the river was quite high and it was noisy, so we couldn't uh, talk to each other um, only on the cell phone. Um, that was quite nice and funny, but um, then we had to make a big, big detour, which took us I think eight hours. So we had to go all the way back and almost go to Tanzania and drive uh, along the border to come back to Talek. I mean, this was also a quite challenging trip, but uh, but it was even yeah, it was a, was a big blessing to see the family again later at Nen Geshe Camp. While we were changing lodges and we were on our way to Angama, we got a call that uh, someone spotted a cheetah mom with cups. Something was not right or something was worrying her, the mom, because she acted a little bit strange. So um, we followed her all the time. I think they want to cross the river. So the cheetah with the three cups went down to the river bank and was watching the river very carefully 
for quite a while until she put first time his feet in the water. She really wanted to cross. I mean, we couldn't believe that because, I mean, she had cups not bigger than this and it's extremely dangerous to cross a river with these babies. is at the river's edge and uh, looks like she wants to cross. I made it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, I think sometimes you have to take risks. Otherwise, um, yeah, you have to take risks. Why do you think she took the risk? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe she thinks the gre the grass is greener on the other side, or maybe she just wants to challenge her kids or learn her kids a lesson. Um, you can, if you want, if you really want, you you can do it. Just try. In my life, I took many risks to be where I am today. I mean, at this trip, highly on my list was also to show my wife and the kids Angama Mara. This wonderful lodge in Kenya, I mean, it's just spectacular, this, this view and what they offer. I mean, we had this, how do you call this, big bonfire and it was just so special. And, 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 and these game drives, I mean, in the, early in the morning when you drive in this steep way d down to the Mara and uh, this, this oh, big savanna with all these trees in the middle, I mean, it's just, just amazing. And Yeah, I didn't. I hope I didn't spoil my kids too much. Um, I hope we can still do some normal camping trips with them. Yeah, no, that was very, very awesome to show them Kenya and this wonderful place of Angama. The 
doctor gave me very, very bad news. He said something like, um, I will only live one or two more years. And uh, which I definitely not accepting. I mean, I can't accept this because I'm still young and I still have young kids and I, I want to live longer because life is extremely beautiful. I mean, I'm alive, I'm still healthy. And, and many times, I mean, I hear that people are saying, wow, you're looking good and you're looking healthy. I mean, also, I'm, right now I'm on chemotherapy and I'm also, I mean, I don't know how, I mean, I saw lots of other people who have chemo, and, and but I don't feel sick. I don't feel that I'm going to die in whatever, half year, in one year. I'm too, I'm too strong for this. And mentally, I'm also preparing myself. No, it's not going to happen. And, and to be honest, I mean, I believe it now. I really believe. I, uh, I mean, I won't survive. Nobody will survive. But I, I will make it much, much more longer than my doctors, doctors told me. I will make it another 10 years or 20 years. I mean, that's for sure, and I believe this 100%. And, and I, I researched so much in the internet, and I, I, I read a lot of books, and it's all in here. If you think, if you give up, and if you think you are sick, and you're suffering, and it's bad, and oh, I'm gonna this, and blah, 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 then probably it will happen. But if you fight against, I mean, you have a very, very, very big chance that you that you come through and that you will that you will win. He's very happy and <laughs> he's good now. He changed completely, very strong. I can see the face. Even though Klaus didn't make it in the end, it's not for me like he was was lose. Like you sometimes say, um, he didn't win or the cancer was um, beating him. I think it was what is actually more um, what he shows is that. Yeah, life is challenging and you can't choose what life throws at you, but you can choose how you deal with it. And, um, and Klaus showed so much um, courage and um, determination and he really saw the, especially through the illness, um, yeah, the beautiful for life. He also never really wanted that uh, people felt sorry for him. I mean, he's, he, he had this hope he's going to make it, but um, I think this is also what, what kept him going. And it's quite, um, yeah, I have admiration for this, that, that he really didn't give up.